go. We go in live. And we are live. <laughs> Ryan Maguire, did you see what happened today? <laughs> did you see what happened man it, it, it it's just good you know it's just perfect to to actually see our enemies crumble <laughs> like um I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for laughing but but ryan uh, you have to just laugh at what just happened to manchester united uh in <laughs> in london I mean, this evening <laughs> I mean, laugh at them. No, no, I won't say feel for them, but what? We was there last year, a very similar date to this. We lost 2 exactly, nil, exactly. And we were getting relegated, and they've just got yeah. smacked. smacked yeah, that, 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 that was the talk, that, you know, that Arsenal was getting relegated. Uh, we're a shitty team. We're the banter club of the, <laughs> of the Premiership. Like, Manchester United... How does that taste? It leaves a bitter taste in your mouth, right? Um, you're welcome to <laughs> the Premiership post-game. Uh, and uh, we have Ryan Maguire uh, here and um, Ola from the United family was supposed to join us. But, of course, he's in a very, very angry state. So I don't think he'll be joining up today. Yeah, Ryan I'll, Maguire, I'll, I'll, you, you're yeah, welcome I'll, to the show. <laughs> All of the United family is not joining us. We're not sure why. We, we don't, We're not sure why is here, but happened today that we don't we, we don't quite know about. Ryan, please Yo. just give us just give us an analysis of what happened today in the Arsenal match. Let's just start with a positive note, right? Let's Arsenal start. four, Arsenal four, uh, Leicester two. What do you think about that game? I think let's get let, let let's go, go for positives. Get positives out of the way, um, not out of the yeah. way, but let's let's do the positives. G get Gabriel yeah. Jesus, absolute fire, oh. um, just oh. absolute absolute masterclass from this guy. Here. Yeah, absolute. yeah, bring it, bring <laughs> it. <laughs> to put this on backwards, like Donkey Spurs. Yeah, does. yeah. Well, no, <laughs> Deji Donkey Spurs. I have it on back. <laughs> Deji, Deji, Deji Donkey Spurs. <laughs> whatever, whatever you say. Um, you can it, see Jesus is ready, Deji. You can see that, right? Yeah. Oh, he's, my he's God. We've seen, we seen glimpses of him last week. Obviously, we've seen him in preseason. But we've seen yeah. glimpses in the Palace game of him looking on top. And he just, he just he, 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 another level today, another level. Um, would have been good to see him get a third goal, get a, get an hat trick. Would have been would have been the the top of the kick, but other yeah, yeah. but re like really good, really good. Zinchenko was was awesome. Two, two signings oh. from City. Just City, just thanks, thanks very much for them. Absolutely, thanks gift. very much, thanks Two very much. Of signings, just just brilliant. And I mean, some of our big names like Odegaard and Saka. Quite quiet games, but we just we didn't, quiet game we today. didn't really need them. That's a positive. We didn't need them, and we didn't, we didn't, we didn't need, need them to step on because every, the other players did. We just it, it was just it was yeah, it was a very, it was it's a very good day. Um, it's a very good day. Yeah, and then obviously we we had the we conceded two, which yeah, on another day could hurt us, but we we had we 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 got the four, which is. We scored more than the other team, which is what yeah. you have to in football. Don't think Daisy Spurs understands that that much. Uh, I, I, I really don't think so. I don't think he gets that. Like the fact that if you score more than the opposition, you've done all right. No matter, no matter how it looks no matter. Next side. And today exactly. and last week, today and last week looked very good. Um, yeah. From an Arsenal Arsenal point of view, anyone else look, looking looking from the outside looking in will say they both looked very good. Um, yeah. Shout out to that Leicester second goal, that Madison goal. It was a great play for him, great build-up play. Um, yeah. but good, good finish from him. Um, they look like they're struggling a bit, Leicester, but from, from getting two against them, they look like they should, they, they should be okay. Look like they should be okay. Yeah. McKeel says, up gunners! <laughs> 
Hey, thanks, Makil. You're welcome to the live. I think everyone is a little bit slow today because uh, today our enemies crumbled in Brentford, uh, in the other side of London. So it's it's just amazing. Ryan, thank you for that analysis. Ryan, it, it's just amazing to see Gabriel Jesus run that defense ragged, dribbles as an eye for the you know for the near post and and scores a lovely first goal. Uh the players were really, really, you know, giving, you know, lots of pressure to uh to that uh uh Leicester uh back four. For Fana was was laid bare to see. I, I, I really don't even see Chelsea taking him after today's game. Uh, even a Yuri Tillemans, I, I really think Arsenal should have a rethink about getting <laughs> about getting Yuri Tillemans. What, what do you say to that? He was he was too yeah. slow today. He I've was no, too slow. It's no noted on how quiet he was, but I don't know if that was just because of how good our central midfield was today. I think we yeah. just, possibly just crowded him out a bit. Um, I would have expected him to have a good game with me if we have his if we have potential suitors for him to 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 to, to basically put himself on show for us. But uh, maybe maybe he just weren't able to just because of how well we played. But I still I still think if there's a chance, especially for 25 million, which is a which is a really good price, yeah, which is a really good price. Off. Yeah, um, Makil Moko says, can we check up on our Man United fans? Uh, Makil, we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that in the <laughs> in the last part of the show. We'll keep the good one for the last, you know. Uh, we'll just talk about Arsenal, first of all. Uh, let's also welcome uh, uh, Amy Baba. He's a top gunner and he's, a, you know, he loves our show here, so... Uh, is the number one top gunner here too, and he says Jesus is the real deal. Hey, uh, Ran Maguire, what do you say to Amy Baba? He says 100%. here Jesus 100%. is the real deal. 100%. Absolute 100%. striker, top striker, he's top got, striker. He's got attributes of a world class winger with his wing play, the dribbling, the pace, the just non stop work rate. And then he's got the attributes of a of a of a poacher. Is in the play. Is is where you want to see that set the second goal showed you. He was where it, it was just yeah. There. It, it was there just exactly time. where you need a striker. Like you, you see, there's something about strikers and positioning that that is it's just so amazing. When you have an eye for goal, you must. I repeat, you must understand the four corners of that eighteen yard box. You, you clearly have to anticipate where that ball is going. And he anticipated it, uh, you know, that it was going towards that near post area. And then he just, you know, hit it right there. Straight up. The keeper lost. Uh, the other players causing chaos in the defensive area of, uh, uh, of uh, Leicester. And there was no one even ready to even, you know, uh, try to even wrestle the ball out from Gabriel Jesus. Absolute, absolute top striker. Uh, I think we got a steal in this one. Uh, let's welcome, hey, um, Ryan Maguire, let's welcome Tony Gerrard TV. He, he's one of our biggest fans uh, on this uh, on this channel. Hey, Tony, um, we respect you here. Uh, thanks for showing up today. And he says, Ryan, uh, Arsenal really tried today, but again, game management is not top-notch. In the second half, what do you say to that, Ryan? I'll I'll let you drive the show today <laughs> on this one. Um, I would like just let him chuck another comment to hundred percent exactly what he means because obviously we conceded, we conceded to. I get that, but it's it's going to be tricky. Less less them look like they're struggling a bit, but we know the qualities of the coaches and they still yeah. do have good players. Players that we've said like Tillemans who. We say he didn't perform. We shut out by by a party and Jacka. Jacka's yeah. done Tillman's role today better than what. Yeah, and he, and he did it better, and, yeah. and he did it better. Do you think there was that extra pressure for 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 uh, Zaka uh, to perform today? Because we all knew that today was a, a very very big audition for Yuri Tillman. 
today was a make or mark day for him. Uh, today was the day he would be at the Emirates and show the Emirates faithful why we actually are in for him. Do you think he failed today in showing the Arsenal faithful why we should actually put in thirty uh, million pounds to buy him? This summer, no. Saying failed, I don't know. Saying failed might be a bit harsh, but then again, it's a big game, and we're going to need him to perform in big games if he plays for us. Um, Definitely. So may, maybe, maybe, but what we've seen, what we've seen in other games. Um, and what we've seen in the what is about a season and a half, two seasons is some well, whatever he's been at Leicester. We've seen what is what he is 100 capable of. Um, e even still, 25 million to then have Tillemans or Xhaka as a bench player, and um, just yeah. to add to that depth is 25 million is an absolute steal in today's market. So, absolute I, I steal, yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, he has just one year in his contract, so. Uh, he's supposed to leave, uh, you know, next season and he can start talking to uh, people who wants to buy him right now. But uh, I, I'm not really sure if we should be giving 30 million bucks away for your retirement. Not with that showing today. We need players that would, you know, that are ready made already. We already have enough youth in our team. Uh, we need those kind of experienced players that will be able to get the hit the ground running when they come into the club. I I didn't really see him, you know, really fire on all cylinders. You know, I I, I just I, I want a ready made, you know, a ready made kind of player to come in and start influencing and fighting uh, for that uh, uh, first team shirt from the from the players that we already have. Uh, Zaka today, his movement, oh, like, I don't know what, I don't know if it's all or nothing, or I don't know if it's the coach. What a scintillating display today from Granit Zaka. What do you say to that, Yuri? I just... Ran, uh, Ran, what do you say to that? <laughs> That's what that's what we know. It's the kind of game we know Jack is capable of, and we then we don't see it enough as what we should do. But when he's on it, is 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 a very good player. There's no there's no arguing either way. Um, he's he's hot headed. Yeah, gets um, gets sendings off here and there. Yeah. But when he's on it, is on it, and he's passing. He's he was he was on the money today. He was yeah. on the money today. I can't believe what he did today, you know. And uh, he gave okay. He gave up the ball uh, for Leicester's first uh, clear chance in the first half. You know, he gave the ball quite easily in the midfield, uh, uh, but that chance was scooped away uh, by the goalkeeper uh, Ramsdale today. Uh, but uh, he gave it quite easily. Uh, the usual Granit Zaka that would see would bury his head down in shame and just go off the rails pick up a few yellow cards. And today, he wasn't even carded in that game. It's a big shock that he wasn't carded today. And with the progression of the game, he was, you know, played upwards. You know, he was just sent as a wolf, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, into that uh, forward position. And he caused lots of damage. Uh, where do you see uh, Gabriel Martinelli come into the dynamics of today's win? Just another typical Martinelli display um, is a young lad. He doesn't look physical, but he is. He, he can he barge. He can just barge all the players off the ball off the ball like they're not there. And it, it's physicality, his physicality is, is is really is really good. It's hundred percent what you want to see from a winger. And if, if Martinelli just carries on playing to nineteen twenty now, when he's 24, 25, the PKs of a winger. He's going to be easily one of the best in the world. Easily. 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 Uh, and now that's two goals in, in, two, in two matches. Can you believe it? Our strikers are firing on all cylinders. Let's go to the comments here. We, oh, our comment section is buzzing. <laughs> it's buzzing. It's buzzing, Ryan. Um, Tony Gerald, shout out to you again. Uh, he says, come on, Yuri is a good player. Is a good option to have in the team. Uh, yeah, I, I buy thing. that idea. I buy that yeah, idea. But with today's showing, man, I, 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 you know, 
I think it's up for a poll. You know, I, I'm not really sure about that because uh, <laughs> because Jaka really, you know, Jaka turned up the game today. He turned it up a notch. He showed us why we don't need a Eurotilimans in the team. Eurotilimans was so slow today. He was extremely slow. Uh, you know, and mind you, uh, during the early part of last season, uh, your Tillemans, uh, you know, was a bit overweight, you know, and it was, you know, it was bantered all over the Premiership. So, uh, you know, we do need players that can keep their discipline, uh, you know, both physically uh, and on the field. So I, I'm not really sure we really need him. But let's go to other comments. Uh, Jesus is good, but still need to be more clinical. Today could have easily been a hat trick. What do you say to that open, <laughs> to that open sitter that that Gabriel lost? He should have gotten his hat trick. Tony Gerrard raises a you know a great point today. What do you say to that, Ryan? It's one of them chances where you see missed a lot, don't you? Where even the best strikers they can miss chances like that that you see and especially in what well, i don't know when they've already scored two um like it's the same as martin ellis last week in it um yeah first one you, you you do see it and yeah yeah 100 percent. it might need to be touch more clinical but if he scores two in every game i'm not going to say he needs to be more clinical i'm going to say more clinical like yeah it. yeah um ran we have our young friend uh, is actually um a very very close friend of mine's kid you know and he loves football and his name is jaden so we're welcoming jaden to our show for the first time jaden you're loved here uh jaden wogu he says um hi jaden is here to watch some arsenal Jaden, you're welcome to our show and we love you. We love you here. He's a very young guy, Ryan, and, um, you know, he loves football. Uh, his father is my extremely close friend. Uh, so um, let's let's see what uh, Amy Baba says here. Uh, with his performance, uh, it was unfair. He didn't get a hat trick. Uh, it's just what we're saying here. Ryan, I, I still feel like... Gabriel Jesus should have gotten that hat trick. He still had a couple of chances, uh, you know, to bury that third goal. Uh, what do you say? Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, what do you say to this? Because yeah, I actually think, think he, he could have run away with that hat trick today. I think he could have got three or four, if I'm honest. Um, yeah. But like, I said, just we'll, go, we'll just be happy in what we've got. We got two goals. <laughs> exactly. Two goals goal for Martinelli. Goal from Xhaka. We don't yeah. need. Him trick today some days we might need him to score but like like we're saying he's got to i mean what i think what em is saying is that his performance maybe deserved in that trick which is 100 percent it wasn't yeah a really really good performance but some days he'll get it some days he won't but he's got that he got them two today which is exactly now the um th there was something that happened in the second half and 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 this shocked me because of the the player it happened to and it was saliba william saliba uh he had a home goal uh, the Arsenal, see, this is the problem I have with Arsenal sometimes in our gameplay. Sometimes when we when we go on the offensive, we totally forget, we throw away the book of, of actually uh, knowing how to defend. The act of defense just goes totally off, off the rails. And, and, and we see how that affected William Saliba. Uh, what would you say uh, uh would be the effect, the long-term effect of William Saliba scoring on home goal today. Do you think he recovered quite, quite well yeah. today after that? It it looked it looked like the fans were applauding him. Um, he was good, he was, was applauded. Yeah, seems a good reaction for the fans because we know the fans love him at the minute, and um, we know how fickle some fans can be. But he looks like he's here for the he's here for a long while. And um, yeah, yeah, I don't think it'll affect much. I just there, there was there should have been a shout. I think I don't know if Ramsdale's not shout. So there should have been some, but then again, he got he, <coughs> he headed it because Vardy was behind him, and if he hadn't have headed it, we was probably going to drop to Vardy. Vardy's probably scoring anyway. It just it was a bit unfortunate where it landed. It's just one of them where he just has to dust off. He just dust it off, pick up, move on, go again. 
Um, like I say, it didn't have any effect on the actual score and the actual outcome of the game, so it shouldn't leave too much of a lasting effect on him. Yeah, I actually thought that he recovered quite well. You know, uh, there was some couple of blocks uh, that he made, you know, got engaged in, uh, you know, some few tackles. Uh, I, I think genuinely that, you know, he... He really picked up himself, you know, from uh, from that disappointing uh, uh, own goal that he scored. And again, defenders you have to... defenders get in them positions all the time. There's chances he can get them on goals. Look at look at Carragher at Liverpool. How many own goals to get about eleven? Yeah, goals. on goal. Yeah, exactly. He was even a professional in doing legend, that. So, <laughs> so we'll, yeah. we'll, he should. He'll be okay. He'll be okay. I, I yeah, because I, I think he really bounced back quite well. Uh, you know, after that, because there were some very, very good uh, tackles he made even after that, you know, after that problem, uh, uh, that own goal. And, you know, the way he bounced back up, uh, he's showing after that, you know, and the support he got from his teammates, you know, they were all, you know, hitting his head. Don't worry, get back up, you know, push your face back up, you know, something like that. It, yeah. it was just yeah, yeah, perfect, yeah. top notch. And again, this is the time, you know, we Arsenal fans always... We take the beating, you know, lo lots of times. Uh, they banter us for being the banter fan fan base uh, out there. But what the Emirates fans did for William Saliba today will never be forgotten by that guy. I, I think if I were him, I would pick up that Arsenal contract and sign it up right now. <laughs> because it, after he made that own goal, the whole fans in the stadium gave him a clap out and they were all yeah. screaming his name. Yeah. I, I, I really feel like the Arsenal fan base is really getting more matured uh, uh, in this uh, area, unlike what happened to Granit Xhaka last, se <laughs> uh, last season. And, you know, we all saw what happened and, you know, uh, it was utterly disgraceful from the fans. But I see been... a bit of maturity from the fans. What do you think? It would have been easier for the fans to just not have really done anything, then because they didn't have to. They could have just they could have shown support by no jeering, no booze, just getting on with it. So that would have been yeah. acceptable. We wouldn't have we'd have never even thought of mentioning it. But that could have exactly. easily been okay on goal, but move on and start cheering as we start attacking again. But instead, yeah. what they did was stand up and just say it's all right. Don't worry, better just get, get on with it, and then let's get going. Show, show uh, the support. Uh, um, Mark Hill, Mark Hill um, also uh, says something very, very important here. Uh, he says, I think White was a bit shaky. What do you think? I, I genuinely think that that's true. White was extremely shaky today in that defense. When Tommy Yasu came in, I felt more safer. I, I, there's something about playing, playing uh, uh, players in their natural position. I don't think in any ramification that Ben White is a right back, is a centre back. Mikel Arteta needs to choose who are his first choice centre back. If it's William Saliba, choose him, put him in that position. If it is uh, Gabriel Magellis, put him in that position. If you need to go with a right back, go with Tomiyasu. You also have a Cedric who can also slot into that uh, position real well. I don't want to see a Ben White in that position. And he hobbled off with an injury. What do you say to that uh, from the question from Mark Hill? Yeah, um, that was the more obvious game for me for him to be shake it right back. I feel like he's done well there the past the past few games, um, but yeah, it was a bit <coughs> a bit a bit off it today. Yeah, hundred percent. I feel like he's hundred percent a centre back with a good right foot, so we could, so they're putting him at right back to cover um, because he's more than likely a better right back than what Cedric is. Um, yeah. But, with Tommy As Tommy Asu is a few minutes in. Um I noticed he didn't play for the Academy last night. So yeah. I feel like he'd be on the bench, maybe involved. Maybe I involved. feel he might have even started, to be honest, but um I'm trying to ease him back in. Same with T N eighteen, he got about what do you get about ten minutes. So we're gonna healthy competition down down the, down Hell, the uh, yeah there. very very healthy com you know competition but again you could also see when Tommy Yasu came into that game uh he was solid the back four became more of a unit uh yeah he doesn't do quite much offensively but at least you know that defending won't be 
uh, much of a bigger problem. He's very tall. He's six foot plus. Uh, he can defend. He can jump for those uh, 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 diagonals that uh, 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 some players, uh, uh, offensive uh, players of the other team, you know, like playing uh, mostly when they play Arsenal. And he's very tall enough, you know, to to get that ball. And uh, uh, and he's very, very good in aerial duels also. So I, I believe that Tomiyasu has to just make that position his own once again. It's free from injury. And, you know, uh, I'm just very, very happy that he's back. And, yeah, we have Lee Izeko. Lee Izeko is a Chelsea fan. I, I need him back, uh, 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 you know, to, to, to grace the minority report again. Uh, I, I hope he comes here. Uh, but he says something. He says, good game, Arsenal. Boys, we're on fire. Thank you, Lee uh, Izeko. You know, <laughs> Arsenal, Arsenal is... Okay, now, Ryan, he raises a very, very big point here again. Just like uh, Arsenal's first game where most of the criti uh, the criticism came from uh, Arsenal not uh, having good game management. Do you think our game management in the second half or in the entire half, both first and second, was good today? I just, in terms of changes, the, the total game management. Yeah, it just it's an easy comment to throw out there. Game management, game management, what whatever you you're gonna you're playing in the Premier League where other teams are gonna have possession, they're gonna attack. It's how you deal with it. Um, I won't even say game management. I just don't think we deal with it hundred percent in conceding two goals. I'm just I'm just happy that we that that we that we scored more. Obviously, um, the. the there are there are there are slight slight things that we do need to work on, but like we're only two games in, they're gonna they're gonna get worked on. The more we play, the the, the more occasion will come in. Don't forget that the players like Zinchenko and Jesus are, are still are still new. We're still work, we're still we're still working on little things. Little, yeah. little things might change. They'll they'll mix it up. There's a lot. There's it, with, with two games in, with two wins, and I still see a lot more to come from Arsenal. We're not. We're not faltering yet. We, we, there's a lot. There's more. There's more to come from us. I can just see us getting better. Yeah, and and Lee Zeko doubles down on it, and he still says a uh, crack still evident. You know this guy here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have so many. Uh, you know, very very good friends uh, that come to watch my show. This one is part of them. You know, is one of them. But I, I would have to wait for his game tomorrow to slag him. You know, he's a Chelsea fan. So he plays against, uh, uh, they play against Tottenham tomorrow. And then I would see if uh, <laughs> your team doesn't have any cracks, Lee Zeko. So we're going to see about that tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> Jaden, who won the match? Ryan, could you answer our young friend, uh, Jaden? Yeah, Brentford won 4 0. <laughs> We'll, 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 come, we'll come to that. We'll come to that uh, later on. Um, let's just see more questions here. Uh, did they lose? Um, Manchester United lost, uh, Jaden, but Arsenal won. So Arsenal won the game. And yes, Patrick, <laughs> we are getting third this season. Oh, okay. Uh, Patrick, uh, which uh, who who is getting third? I don't know. Uh, I'm guessing. I don't know who's... Guess, guessing he probably means Arsenal because it's more than more than likely at the minute. Uh, more than likely at the minute, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Ryan, I, I want us to look at this very, very holistically. Arsenal went into the den of the lion uh, last week, grind uh, a hard fought uh, a two zero win in a place that typically. Normally, the Arsenal would have fallen uh, to the sword. We go down there, we grind the results, and it's away. 2-0, keep a cl kept a clean sheet. And this week, we knew, we, you know, we kind of knew that we definitely had to win this game today uh, uh, to continue that transition uh, and to continue uh, to have a constructive continue, uh, you know, uh, uh, to see our position elevating the Premier League. And we welcomed Leicester City, uh, a team that has good players that can be able to cause confusion to any, to any team out there, even the big teams out there. 
and Arsenal grind a 4-2 win over Leicester. We are six points tied with Manchester City uh, at the top of the league. Technically, Arsenal is top of the league in the first two matches. What do you say to this? Should we be excited, Ryan? 100%. Should we be excited? 100%. Um, we just we, we look like the, the process is clicking in now. We yeah. Look, we 100% look like we've got the right manager for it. The team's looking very good. The signings, the, the transfer strategy has always been very clear in, yeah. term, in terms of ages and the way he wants us to play it. It's always been very clear. There's a few comments last year after the Brentford game, especially, that our transfer strategy wasn't clear. And if it wasn't clear to you, what, what are you looking at? You can see the ages of who we were signing. And yeah, you can see what he's doing, and it's still a relic. The reason you should be excited is it's still a relatively young. It's a young side. What last last year's youngest Premier League team. It's only we're only going one. We're only going one way, and if and we, we good good year good year last year only continuing this year. Um, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Be very excited, and yeah, other yeah. fans be very nervous because Arsenal are here. Definitely. Uh, to, uh, Tony Gerrard uh, TV says something here and he says uh, Saliba is uh, is a top notch. Uh, I like how the fans show him love. Uh, we are in a good place now. Yeah, just, Ryan, it's just the same thing, uh, you know, we we're saying and we thank God that our subscribers here, uh, you know, also recognize that fact that uh, the fans showed him love today. Uh, it's very, very important. Mostly young players like this. It, it's very, very important that we treat them with respect and and help them when they uh, when they are in their tooting stage. Uh, you know, uh, because if the fans reacted in a different way today, first of all, it will knock the whole confidence that he has gotten from that uh, Crystal Palace match. It's to throw it all out the window and he'll be more susceptible to more mistakes. Uh, just see what uh, <laughs> Lissandro Martinez had today. We'll get back to that's our next topic. But let's uh, see one more comment from uh, uh, Tony Gerrard here. Uh, uh, Tony Gerrard says something here. He says, White was shaky, but again, Tomiyasu need to be at the bench to build this fitness up. Uh, what will you say about our bench? It, technically, Ryan, do you think our bench is that bench that has what it takes to replace uh, the players that we currently have in our first uh, team shit? Do you think we have a vast and, you know, uh, a very, very competitive kind of uh, uh, bench? I think our squad depth is a bit lacking. Um, it could it could be doing it could, it could be a bit it could be a bit better. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> obviously, though, we got we got Smith rollback, which is a which is a real positive. Ooh, very good positive too today. Yeah, Smith back on the bench. Yeah, squad depth could do. Um, we will we're adding two. That's why Telemans to, Telemans to me is is just a definite signing because even if he's not. Even if he's not playing, just to have him on the just boost up that defense. Imar Jack is going to be on the bench there. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I saw his showing today, and I, the jury's out on that one. Everyone who is still on the show, please comment right now. Comment right now, kind of like a poll. Do you want us to still get a Yuri Tillemans into our team? Do you think it will help our team in any way? Do you think you will help Arsenal Football Club in any way? After the showing today, do you think Arsenal Football Club should bring out 30 to 35 million pounds and buy your retirement to like right now, ASAP, to be part of our bench? Um, let's see what um, John, <laughs> John Flink, Flink, okay. Flink CG, yeah, okay, uh, but I know the guy is my friend. Um, I wouldn't play uh, Cedric unless last resort. That's hmm. what reserves are for, bro. That's what reserves are for. Yeah, that's what reserves are for. And mind you, um, Ryan, we also have to uh, overemphasize that Arsenal is in 
uh, we are going to be playing lots of competitions uh, this season. Uh, we are going to be playing in, uh, you know, at the Europa League. We'll have uh, two cup games to 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 cater for uh, the FA Cup uh, and uh, and uh, and the Carling Cup, what which was called before. Uh, so you know, we we need to play this. You know, we need to play these games, uh, and they're so enormous, and we need lots of uh, strength in depth. Uh, you know, so we definitely need, you know, lots of uh, players stationed in different areas, both in that back four and in the midfield, which is key, so that we don't overstress mostly a player like Partey. Uh, we need Partey to be very, very uh, strong. What do you think about Orion? Please, I want to look in depthly into this. What do you think was Thomas Partey's uh, uh, contribution today? He made it look steely, but what do you, what what are the dynamics he brings to that team? And most especially, uh, do you think we're really managing him in a way uh, that is efficient enough in order not to get him injured this season? First, first of all, obviously online with the Cedric stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's not uh, going to be a starting eleven, but he, when he does play. He might not be the best right back, but he's got an engine in him. He's up and down that flank non-stop and he can cross the ball in very, very well. Yeah. Um party party. Um is a bit he, he just one of Emery goals, he gets his job done. He, he, he like like Kante. Um not the he's not the showman footballer. He's not your he's not your he's not your Ronaldo and they're not your Roy Keynes where they're in your faces. But what they have to do, they they do it well. Um, he keeps the yeah. ball. He keeps the ball well. Um, he's, he's a great passer of the ball. You can tell he's he, 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 he commands that centre mid, <coughs> the, the centre central midfield very well. Just everything that he needs to do, he just he just gets his head down and does it. There's no flashiness about him. Um, he's not. He, he doesn't seem to be overawed by it. Any any the pressures he'll just he'll just take. Obviously, he played for a big team in Spain. Plays for a big team in England. He can just. It seems he can handle it. Just anything you ask for him, he'll do, he'll he'll pretty much do it. He's just he's just a sound sound player. Yeah, and yeah, we have uh, uh, an acknowledgement here from Lanre Ade Bambo, one of our big supporters here, but he's a Chelsea fan actually. Uh, but it's nice that he could come join us today. Lanre, big ups to you. Big shout out to you, and. Um, <laughs> We surprised him because we tried. We tried every week. We tried. We, we week. tried. We tried. Sometimes we tried. We tried. Pull it off, but we try. We try our best. <laughs> and uh, today happens to be Lanre Adebambo's birthday. So oh. happy birthday to you, Lanre, uh, from uh, from the crew. Hopefully, uh, have a good birthday from tomorrow. From the crew of uh, Tony, uh, Claude Gunner TV, and Ron Maguire Gunner TV. Uh, we wish you a happy birthday, Larry Adebambo. You know, keep living, uh, you know, keep being happy and keep living in grace. And thank you for that acknowledgement. Arsenal boys try today. Totally surprised me. Okay, um, Ryan, we, we need to get to a more serious topic before we get to banter Manchester United. They're going to get it from me this evening. Uh Ramsdale's performance today. I I kind of see Ramsdale a little bit uh in over his head. I I I think he he now understands that there's no competitive cover for him. One. Secondly, I, I feel that now he feels like he has settled into that number one position as the as the keeper that head the line for, for Arsenal Football Club. I feel he is now felt is now feeling so confident and comfortable in that position. I felt he made two erratic uh uh, uh movements today in the 18 year box, but the one he went to um uh, uh cluster and clash with uh, uh Jamie Vardy. Uh, I, I I felt that was reckless. And in that header that Saliba was trying to back pass to him, I felt that if he did not run in quickly and, you know, was in between or in around 
the 18 yard box within uh, uh, within his uh, lines, he would have easily caught that ball or saved the ball and put it out for a corner for a corner kick. Do you think Ramsdale is just too comfortable in that position right now? It's a very good shout. It's a very good shout. Um, I think with losing Leno, um, even he's just he's definitely lost that. He's lost that competition for the place because Matt Turner, from what I saw in pre-season, does not have it at all. Um, I don't know who he is or where he's come from. Um, yeah. Just there to sit on the bench. I think his closest, look, at the minute, his, his, his closest rival is Carl Hain, who we've promoted now from the from the youth to be the number three keeper. Um, he's got to be his closest competition because I don't see... I don't see Turner. Um, I don't see Turner coming anywhere. Um, yeah, he, maybe. May, yeah, maybe he's got. Maybe he get too comfortable. But then again, pretty much every big team has the number one keeper, and they've not. Uh, the second keepers are always just there as a reserve. Look at Edison at City. I, I, I couldn't tell you who their second keeper is at the minute. Um, yeah. We've been Taylor for about. Um, 12 years or something daft like that. He just sat on the bench and never played a game for him. Um, so, and then Liverpool's second keeper is not, I can't get his name, his name's not coming to me at the minute, but it <laughs> to be fair, is a decent keeper. But then again, and then Chelsea have got Kepper as their sub, as their second oh, keeper. Sub, yeah, big money keeper, but is absolute dog. So he's not yeah. really playing a good Mendy. So maybe it's not that, but. Then again, it, it you could it could be that so maybe Ramsdale needs to needs to concentrate because yeah, just say he might not have that competition now, but if he doesn't perform, then then Arteta's gonna gonna be looking at maybe transfers next. At, at, yeah, at <laughs> options, I, I I definitely trust Arteta with that right now after watching a couple of episodes of All or Nothing. Uh, but uh, we'll leave All or Nothing for now, and even Lee Izeko here also doubles down on what I just said. Uh, he, he said something here. Spot on, Tony. Uh, Ramsdale is getting carried away. The number one position is getting into his head for sure. Uh, definitely. You can't over, you know, overrule that. Uh, he, he, I, I just felt he's just too, uh, you know, it's just too comfortable uh, in, in that position right now. And, and Turner is not really that keeper that I... I've, you know, that I felt that would give uh, Ramsdale, you know, that fight for his money or run for that shirt. Uh, and we have Jay here. Jay, you're welcome to the live. Hi, you Josh. are welcome to the live. Jay says something here. He says, hi, this is Joy. Oh, Joy. <laughs> Joy, okay. I am happy welcome to be Josh. on your live show. Yeah. My dad is a big Arsenal fan. Thank you. Thank you, Joy, for joining us. And we love you here. You're always welcome to the show. Hey, um, Ryan, can, can, can we just, can we just uh, give, uh, uh, can we just give, can we just sip beer or drink something and toast to, <laughs> to the demise of Manchester United? Please, just raise your glass. Please, just raise your glass. Raise, you have a beer there, please. Just raise your glass. Let's toast <laughs> to the demise of Manchester United. Oh, my God. Mm. Ah, That was a good one. It, 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 it got deep into me. I love it. See, Ryan, I like to see Manchester United get the banter club for this week all over again because we have to do it at the Ryan and Cloud show uh, uh, coming up next week on Tuesday. Manchester United goes into the heart of London in Brentford Community Stadium. The G fluffs his lines, loses a <laughs> ball that uh, was just near his near post. <laughs> Got it so in that the ball to his net, and in the second goal, passed it uh, directly to Ericsson, who was a confused guy. In, 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 oh, my God. He didn't know where to pass the ball to. He didn't know he was getting it. He didn't know he was getting it. He, 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 he had his head off. He was, 
he had his head off. He was thinking about a story his mum told him when he was a little kid. And he was he was thinking about the, the birds eating. The next minute, the ball was at his feet. And he went, what's going on here? And then... And then <laughs> <laughs> Harry Maguire was was running like a headless chicken. Uh, Ten Hag was looking so confused at the point he was shaking his head. I saw a confused man in, in, in their coach, uh, Ten Hag, today. He looked totally confused. Like, he, he, he didn't know what hit him. And now, the problem with, with this loss... 4-0 they have today is that teams now have a clear blueprint because Ten Hag wants Manchester United to play from the back. Just exactly what Mikel Arteta tried to, you know, imbue in this team <laughs> for the past two seasons. And we became the banter club of, you know, of the premiership because we made a couple of mistakes. So it's now good that Manchester United is seeing what's happening. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Ola uh, from the United family. He was supposed to be here, and so he lost, and it just became, <laughs> I don't know, he went a wall. We didn't see him today. We're sorry, Ola, for losing 4-0. Ran Maguire, what do you say? Manchester United, zero. <laughs> Brentford, just, four. Can you believe this? Tell, talk to need, me. Just talk we need to, to me. Give, let's give a shout-out to Ten Hag, right? <laughs> Just let's shout him out, who's come to Man United and somehow, I don't know how he's done it, by the way, but somehow he's made this club look worse than what it was last year, right? I don't I don't know. It looks, he's made signings and they look worse, right? And I don't oh get God. it. They don't look like they want to play. Most of them don't want to be there. That's what it looks like. Um, maybe the signings he's made want to be there, possibly. I can't see it. But maybe maybe they do it just Martinez was confused. He he wasn't tall enough. Uh me just just had a little push on him and just you know knocked the ball into the net. It was just that easy. Martinez was lost in that in in that defense line. Uh, uh Maguire, I'm sorry he bears the same name with you. He's nothing like you. He, he was just roaming like a headless chicken in that defense. And I liked it. I genuinely love seeing <laughs> Harry Maguire struggle in, in, in that Manchester United uh, defence. Manchester United, listen to me. You guys are done. You are done. You are done. This is a relegation battle. Manchester United is officially shit. It's the shittiest club right now. This... I, would always, I would always say, I know it would be the philosophy, no matter who the player is, if they don't want to play for my club, if anyone wearing the Arsenal shirt does not want to play for Arsenal, off you go then. Bye-bye. Go find that club that wants you. And I think United need to be the same. Your players like Ronaldo, Rashford maybe. If they yeah. don't want to be there, get them out. Find someone who wants to be there. If it's a transfer or if it's from the academy, just anyone who wants to actually play. The United Academy, it's under 23s, under, probably under 18s. I've got a really solid base. Bring them all up. Get them all playing. Bring them all up. That will where, play. Where, 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 where are your youth play. team? Where are your youth team? Uh, who are you investing in? Uh, you know, this was supposed to be the celebration of the 30th anniversary of the Premier League, of the English Premier League. Uh, you know, and one of the biggest teams in the last decade in the last two decades and a very very prominent part of that 30 years anniversary in manchester united they are royalty are going to a small banter club in london and being trashed 4-0 in the heart of london uh, it, ryan how can you fix this like if you were Ten Hag, how would you start fixing this problem right now? Well, um, you just you've got to get the players that want to play. Um, obviously, it, what I said what I said to you the other day is that they remind me of Arsenal, and me and me, me mate have said this that they do remind we was in that position, that transitional period. Uh, we've got a new manager come in who wants to play the way he wants to play. 
but the players can't play like that. So when Ateta came in, we had Czech and and several defenders who couldn't play out from the back, but yet yeah. Ateta persisted in getting them to play like that. And it never worked with that team. And that's what why we, we had them losses. And like you said, people laughed because Czech couldn't do it. And that's why yeah. he reached out to he reached out to Ramsdale. In, and uh, obviously he had Le- Leno and Leno couldn't do it. So he got Ramsdale. Yeah, got he got Ramsdale. Off, he off Martinez, who Martinez, who was a good shot stopper, but couldn't can't play out. He he has that he knows Atat knows he wants to play, and that is playing out from the back, and it's exactly what Tenag wants to do. And just at the minute, he's just not got them players. Well, doesn't look like he's got them players that can do it. But it, it, with signings and with training and with with other things, it surely will come. It's just waiting it out until it comes. It's took us three years to finally get what looks like we're there. Um, it's just going to be the same. It's going to be the exact same, exact same for them. Um, shout out to that comment there from Emmy, who said we don't. Who said I don't think United. Uh, Emmy Baba, uh, he says uh, nah. I don't think that. I don't think Man United are done. Uh, well, we are in the same was, situation, or we were they, in the same situation last season. Lost yes. first three games. They yeah, said it's it about, it's understandable. They said it about us, so we're now allowed to say it about them. So that is why we're saying it. And banter, uh, but, jokes, whatever. But if we, if, we, um, if we want to if we, if we want to if we want to check out the statement very very well, mind you, in the in the last, uh, I think, in the second minority report, I told Deji Spores, I told him, I said, hey, mate, I genuinely think Manchester United will be in the relegation battle this season. But people felt like maybe I was crazy. This is a testament to what I'm trying to say. Manchester United is a very, very big club. It's English royalty. Maybe people are forgetting this. Maybe they are not in the Champions League right now. But people forget that they are English royalty. You have money. Your club is not run efficiently. I understand that. But you have money, right? What stops you from going? Even I discussed this on the rival show with uh, Ola. Shout out to Ola, our friend uh, here. Uh, Why can't Manchester United go out like every other team, have a clear blueprint that uh, Ralph Ragnick left for them, go into the market and buy players. Just have a blueprint, have a plan. Come out with a plan and follow up and double down on that plan. Because when they went for Lissandro uh, uh, Martinez, this was as Arsenal first went for him before Manchester United threw their cap in and then they got him. So it shows that Manchester United basically don't have a transfer blueprint or clear transfer plan. They're confused. And right now, they're going for an Adrian Rabiot who left PSG because he couldn't play, who was in Juventus and is the laughing stock of Juventus because his mom uh, has been having scuffles with both PSG and Juventus all together. So this is a very, very big problem for Manchester United. It's no longer a case of being a banter. They they were already bantered last season uh, because a huge club like theirs should have been in the Champions League and they're out here playing the you know the European the European League. Uh, that's a big enough banter for them. But this wouldn't be a joke again. It won't be about that banter situation again. It will genuinely look like a relegation scrap this season what do you think i think it's very i think it's too early to call it relegation i can see why you're saying it because obviously they said it about us we were three games in three losses um but their losses they they look a lot worse but like it just it, it was going to take time for them and um, but the, even though it is, it does. Even though it does sound, even though it does sound. Uh, Ryan, like, Ryan, Way. Uh, Dubaka TV. You can say that again. Brentford four, United zero. 
just say it so Ryan can understand what we're talking about here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Dubai. Obviously, you're saying obviously the relegation side, and it does sound obviously it might sound daft, but if they don't start performing quick, um, a couple more losses, and they are going to be down there, um, 100, percent and if they, they don't want to be in a relegation scrap, 100, percent because they're the players, they've not got the players to fight relegation, 100, percent but um, c- couple wins, couple good results, and they the, 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 the more likely move up, move up the move up the table to where um where they should be but um at the minute i don't see them any any higher than eighth ninth tenth at all i can't I, there's no positives at the minute is there yeah um lise could say something uh say something very important here he says uh the worst thing about manchester united's loss uh was the players attitude ryan can you hear this yeah the yeah. worst thing about manchester united loss was the player's attitude. Exactly. EPL is tough and any team can be beaten. But keep your head up and show your worth. Ten Hag has a big, big problem. It's just exactly what we're saying here. Ten Hag, I feel he'll he'll be sacked after 10 games this season. I predict that outrightly because he's going to lose up to seven games uh, out of their first 10 games. And I genuinely think he will struggle this season. Uh, Rashford can't seem to get his shooting boots on. Uh, his head is turned on by that PSG uh, uh, movement. Oh, Ola decided to grace the show. <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, let's have a big laugh. <laughs> Oh, really? 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 Ola, you decide to show up. We're in the top as well. Good dedication. Good dedication. I like to see it. I like to see it. Like it was, it was so frustrating that I didn't even know. I didn't know where to start from. But the thing is, like I said, I'm not. I have never. I'm not surprised about what I'm saying. But at the same time, I I didn't think it, it would be this bad. It has gone now from bad and it's going towards getting worse. And I feel against Liverpool that we confirm that it is worse than against Liverpool because Liverpool will absolutely kill us. So I I, I just feel like I feel it's good for for, for United fans. We want to win, we want to see our team scraping a one new win, two new win. But I feel it's good. It's good. This is starting very early this season, and it, it's an eye opener to all of the fans that this team is is not is not. We are not even one percent. On the road to where we want to be, we need to get quality players. Look at us now. Look at what this transfer window has done to us now. Only just a good transfer window has transformed the Arsenal team into a far better team than they were last season. Exactly. So, so I, you I can totally see agree. what what like Arsenal solved a lot. Like their key positions, they bought in a striker in Gabriel Jesus. They bought in Zinchenko. We've not even seen Fabio Vieira. We've not seen him at all. He hasn't, he hasn't even come into this lineup at all. And we already seen this team playing well. See Martinelli, see, see how, how good he was today. Martinelli was very good. Look at Saka, very good. And this was not Saka's best game, but he was still very good. Martinelli stole the show. He played really well. So you see what a good transfer window can be into a team. Something like the key problem. We all knew we had, a, we had defensive issues. We brought in Martinez, but Maguire still keeps starting because of, I don't know, maybe he's got inland politics or whatever. I don't know. He keeps starting. Now our midfield is nowhere to be found. Today we had to play Ericsson in basically the DM position. Ericsson oh is not a DM, he's an attacking God. player. Oh we, saw him, we saw him deep. Bruno was nowhere to be found. Bruno, I, I can say this is one of Bruno's worst performances I've seen in the Master United shirt. He was nowhere to be found. He was eating his, his usual Hollywood parties. He was making bad decisions, taking shots when he was supposed to be taking. Dashford, I don't know. I will. I will say Rashford. I I I, I say it to you when when we, uh, on the last stream on Thursday when yeah, that news broke. Yeah, I will yeah, say yeah, Rashford. Yeah. I will because Rashford is so bad that he can't he can't even do the basics. The Rashford we knew before used to take on players. His pace was very good, taking on players, hitting a lot of like putting in crosses. Now he's, he's doing nothing. So I don't, and that's why I say no one, anybody that is blaming a coach for his match performance is just is just being biased. It, 
it will be Pep into this team. Pep will not be able to do anything with this team. That's, that's a shame. <laughs> Pep went to Man City. Pep had to change his first level. He had to change his first level. He has got all the he brought in Navas. That was why he playing well. He had to change him. He brought in Ederson. So that, that's where funding comes in. Man City's success today was partially because of money. They spent the money, they gave the coach the money to get all the players he wants. And he got all the players he wants. There is no one Man City player that was there then that is still there today. We see, we see how few Jones in our team. That, that's how bad it is for Manchester United. We still have Phil Jones in our team after how many years of not even playing. Um, Ola, see, 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 see. Um, um, Ola, it's easy for us to uh, slag Manchester United here and now. But, oh my God, what was that from the G? The G has been one of your most outstanding players for the past two seasons. He have been winning player of the year for the last two seasons. And he comes out no, today. He comes out today. Let's a, let a go in, first of all. Uh, and in the second goal, he passes it out uh, to Ericsson, who is lost and doesn't know where to pass the ball to. Manchester United's defense was... In I would, a shambles. Uh, I Martinez, for that ball. Martinez I couldn't jump. Martinez couldn't jump. You should I, know I, I, that the Premier League. Um, all I wait. I'm sorry. I, I need to. I need yeah, to yeah, get go this explained to you more, so you understand yeah. where I'm coming from. Lissandro Martinez isn't tall enough and physical enough to even tackle a Lee. Not talk of when he would go and uh, meet uh, a Salah, uh, oh my God, or a Firmino, or, or a Gabriel Jesus. Even apart from that, Rashford can't just seem to get his scoring boots on. Ronaldo is missing chance after chance after chance, and he's been played as your number nine. Sancho who was one of the most outstanding players in the preseason, can't even score. He can't even get a good run, even a good cross into the net. Today, Manchester United shows how rotten the club has gotten to. It shows the problems of not playing uh, with your first 11 in your preseason game to get to understand each other. It shows why you have bad management. Ola, where would you pitch the blame on? Bad players? I, I, players that have in the last sucky game. attitude? Or would you place yeah. the blame on the Glazers? No, it, I, anyone that is blaming, that is putting the blame only on the Glazers, is just being delusional. Because we can clearly see that these players are not good enough. But where the blame will go to the Glazers is... They made a lot of bad decisions in the past that made us have this, this set of players that are shit. And the thing is, today's game, like with the gear, this conversation has been coming up with the gear when we signed Ten Hag because the gear has never been a ball playing keeper. So a lot of Manchester United fans were like, okay, will the gear be able to play Ten Hag style? But we were like, okay, let's give him a benefit, of, like let him give him a chance. We should stop him. The gear is good. He's a good shot stopper. He knows how to like. He makes some saves, some saves that he doesn't. But, but, he, but he, didn't, he, he, he didn't show that today. He didn't show that yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, See, at, like every every player has a bad game, but we all can agree that the guy is a good shot stopper. But while kicking kicking the ball out with his feet, the guy the guy he was not used to it. He don't used to do it. But today he shows that I'm not sure if the guy can really play in a Ten Hag team because Ten Hag we know that he's used to all his keepers like deep. The pattern I used to play is just a player from the back. Maguire was very shocking today. I'm surprised we are talking about Lissandro Martinez. Maguire was very shocking. My, my it was like a lot, headless like, chicken. Like in, 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 in the first chicken. half, like in the first half, like the first goal, my, my, Maguire was 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 a culprit. In the second goal, his movement was nowhere to be found, and that was why oh the guy had to pass that ball to Eriksen. That ball was supposed to be passed to either 
They be the guy. Uh, look at. I will just. I will just quickly code. ask. I will just quickly ask Ryan. Ryan, I want you to come in here. You know, I know you're an ex, uh, Arsenal expert, uh, but I I also want your your take in this one. Do you think the problem of Manchester United that they're facing right now, the problems they are being plagued with, do you think you will put it at the foot of the players or at the foot of the Glazers? On a I already know Ola's uh, stance towards that. But where will you put that problem? Where will you cast it on? It's players for me, 100% players. Um, hmm. um, Glazers for me have put the money in. Um, they've spent quite a bit quite a bit of money. Um, I don't think they have, in terms of we've got, obviously, the Kronkis were struggling with us and then Josh Kronki looks like he's stepped in and is, is, is really trying his best. I don't see I don't see the Glazers having a Josh Karonki type and that might be the issue. The director of football whoever the director of football is or the director in football operations, whatever they call it nowadays. Um maybe that maybe him between the club and the Glazers and and getting it across as well as what they should be. There's there's definitely something there in terms of the Glazers not hundred percent, but then again the players aren't performing on the pitch and for me they've for me they've got an issue with the big issue now in the next 10 games they've got they've got liverpool arsenal tottenham <laughs> city newcastle in the next 10, the next 10 <laughs> games is ryan, ryan, ryan please ryan. have, me, uh, have mercy on ola have mercy on ola don't give him a heart attack come on now don't give ola a heart attack it's just just like it like I, you know, remember I told you in the, in the other game that all, all my international fans, we have, no one really has high expectations. And that's why like, if you look at the top, the top, like, sports guys, yeah. if they mention the top four, in, in my, even the Manchester United fans are not putting Manchester United in the top four because we know it's not realistic with the team we have. But, see, I, I agree with Ryan, but I said something about the laser putting out the money. It's not about putting out the money. It's about allowing people that know how to spend that money, spend the money. We've had issues. The, the Lakers, they spent over a billion in transfers, but they spent it with Ed Woodward being in charge, Matchup being in charge, people that are bankers, that are after star but, names, but, that are after but, business, but, business, but wait, it, business it, it, oriented it, it, players. It's easy to say all these things. See, wait, Ola. It's easy to say all these things. When Sancho, when you guys wanted to buy Sancho, you know how much you bought Sancho for. Before yeah. he was coming to the club, you guys were very, very happy, right? But that was many, of my, many of my Manchester oh, United sure. friends were very happy when he was coming. Okay, okay. Uh, Anthony, Anthony, let me tell you. He's something. a good player. Want. So I, all of a I, sudden, I, how is he shit right now? He can't shit. even play. They, how see, is there's one thing. shit on that two seasons? How see, is he total see, crap? There is one thing. There is there is one thing. There is one thing. We players need to know is that. Look at Bruno. When Bruno came in, Bruno was buzzing. He was getting free kicks, winning, scoring penalties here and there. But suddenly, he went bad. It shows you that. See, if you have a huge bunch of players playing cap, there is no way you play cap. Look at look, look at this best one game in the second half. We play, after just three changes, we played better. After just three changes, and it's, it's, it's not about playing better. And and because Bedford were not eager to. Go forward again. They were not able to score. They sat back because and they, they have defended. four goals. Why would they yes, even want to go forward? Yes, yes, because they have four goals. So, see, the thing is, if you keep playing with a bad bunch of players, see, players that are not good enough, if you are playing with quality players, you, you will look good and you will look good because the players around you are very good. But if you are yeah. playing with players that are shit, even, even, look, okay, look at Ronaldo. <laughs> you tell me Ronaldo is not a good goal scorer. Ronaldo is a good goal scorer, but at United, now he looks shit. Even at Juve, when I was called a hundred or something goes at Juve, and Juve was like one of, one of his most underwhelming performance throughout his career. So, so yeah. you get like if you are if you are playing with good players, you do look good. But if you are playing with um, shit players, you, look, uh, you get let, let's take let, let's take one of these comments from from Lee Zeko. Uh, most of most of the Man U players would have liked to walk off today. That's how bad it was. No desire. Zero man, do you know what it takes to play for the Manchester United to don that shirt? Um, hey guys, we we have a very, very um, important guest here. Um, his name is Best Man Walken. Uh, you know, he he really supported his, his you know, his support for this station. 
uh, this channel as a whole uh, is really huge. So, you know, we should really uh, big him up. Uh, best man walking. Thanks, man. Uh, the players are at fault. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Because I, those players were, bro, they were shit. Maguire was a big disgrace. He's he just something a disgrace. That Anthony, he said something, Anthony. Manchester United, as they went from bringing in players, players wanted to come to United, players wants to come to play for the badge of the club, to players coming in for money. And once once money is the priority of a player coming to a club, 95% of that player won't be able to perform. You have to come into the club with the mentality of, I want to play, I want to win titles, I want to put in my effort. Like today, you, you, you don't see any effort on that pitch. The best first team, the, the best first bench, we put in more effort than the starting line of, of Manchester United today. Oh, so, and 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 that is where and, and that is where the issue of the Glazers come in because they were going for players that don't, that didn't even want to play for Manchester United, but they were pricing them in because of money. They bought in a lot of these players because of money. They kept yeah. Rashford there because of money. Yeah. They increased Rashford's contract, gave him two hundred and something thousand a week. Without what, what has he won? He has won nothing. He hasn't broken any record. He hasn't done anything yeah. to deserve the money he's earning. But because they are after. Once we keep Rashford, they have to pay him that amount of money. Look at Man City. Bernardo Silva is about to leave. What did Pep say? We'll get to Man City here. Uh, let's yeah. read this comment. Uh, it says here, uh, the difference between Man... Amy Baba, shout out to you. Uh, the difference yes, between Man United uh, losses uh, below the six EPL teams and the Gunners is that two of the first three games we lost last season was to Man City... And yes, Chelsea. true. Yeah, we are losing yeah, to Brighton and, and Brentford, and people are saying uh, the positive for there is because has now lost three games last season. We are losing to Brighton and Brentford, so it is yeah, that it's, bad. It's utterly it's disgraceful. Bad. Um, let, let's move on. Uh, uh but uh, <laughs> Ryan, me and Ryan, will, you know, will be on the Ryan, uh, you know, uh, yeah. the Ryan and Cloud show on Tuesday, uh, Ryan. Do you think it's not yet a banter giving? You know, we're not giving the banter no. No. yet because no, uh, you know no. there, there are games tomorrow. But this do is, you this... think that Manchester United is nearing the banter <laughs> of the week again? No, 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 definitely. Our last face. <laughs> Tony, Tony, listen, 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 listen. Yeah. Right, listen. They're nowhere near it at the minute, right? Because. <laughs> Right, nowhere near Banter Club at the minute. Because if Chelsea get a result against Spurs tomorrow, no matter yeah. what that result is, Tottenham Hotspur, Banter Club this week. Banter after, Club this week, yeah, fact, that's another thing. Every single yeah. Tottenham fan, we're gonna back, we're gonna smash Chelsea tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Three nil, four nil, five nil, whatever. If Chelsea get a result, hundred percent. If not, Ola, look away. Walk away, no, yes. and 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 Ryan, Ryan, Deji Spores will be, he'll be, <laughs> he'll be biting his tongue at what you just said now, ready to fight with you. I, I really need to get you, you know, get you in that minority report I have with him. You know, he graces the minority report most times, so I, I would like to have him there with you and Ola too. But let's see, you know, I'll plan it out and see what we can do because. But I'm waiting for a good day when my uh, uh, Tottenham is gonna lose, and then you <laughs> you just you're just gonna show up to the minority report, <laughs> and then we're gonna banter the discourse together. But that's <laughs> exactly. But that's a way. Manchester City won their match today, four goals to nil. What do you think about that match, uh, Ryan Maguire? They. they they've just finished they've started the season like they finished last year um best team in the league um arguably the best team in the world um yeah. obviously madrid madrid won the champions league which would say that it would be they would be the best team in the world but um week in week out they just perform every single week um they just they're gonna be first first or second there's no other position that city will place this season most likely will be first. My shout to be first. Um, they just they've just continued exactly how how they finished last last season. Last yeah, and and they won the match four goals to nil. Ugh, that's huge. Uh, uh, Ola, what do you think 
about uh, that match, uh, Manchester City, uh, your noisy neighbours against Bournemouth? Uh, that's that's no surprise. We all know how how, do, how good Man City is, and they even won the game without Alan even scoring. So 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 you should know, and that's the benefit of of, of having squad depth. It showed today. It showed today. They had, they had to take Alan off, brought in Alvarez, took uh, uh, Fodin off, brought on Grealish. The quality of the players on Man City's bench who, who, who start for Manchester United and win games. So that's yeah. where you need squad depth, yeah. which is very important. And that is why I feel even us now, now you, should, you need to get in a couple of like two more players in for them to have that squad depth. But Man City are just doing what, what, what Man City does, winning their games yeah. and getting the three yeah. points. And, and, and but, but it's just good to see that Arsenal too are following up. Now it's two in two for Arsenal, two in two for City. Because it will be so annoying if City start getting away with the league this early. So we need some, we need the other teams to to keep tab on them and make sure they don't just run away with it the way they did last season. Well, last season was, yeah. it was later fight, yeah. but you know what City does now? City are, they are the best yeah. team in the league. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, um, Ryan, uh, Southampton uh, had a late comeback um, against uh, Leeds. What do you think today? You, you know, Ralph, you know, you know. I was lo loving that result at first. Yeah, Leeds, yeah. Nil, away to Southampton. The all conquering massive like world beating club Southampton, according to the Spurs fans, that the, the Spurs fan managed to beat them 4 1 was the, um, the best result that the Premier League has ever seen, apparently. And now they were losing 2 0 at home to Leeds, was going to be it was going to be a great day. But they showed bottle, they showed spirit, they showed fight exactly like they have done under how under Hansel Hooten. He's got he's, he's just a, he's a sound manager, he's got. The mentality is good because they can come back from nine nil losses and have good seasons. They're just a sol they're a solid team. Um, it was a surprise. It, it was going to be a surprising result, I think, losing two nil home to Leeds because I think Southampton are better. Well, hundred percent they're better than Leeds. They, they must just have had an off weekend. Um, they, they they fought they, they fought back very well. Sold that good spirit, good bottle, um, and it was it ended up being a very good, very good game. Yeah. Um, Ola, um, what do you think? Brighton, Newcastle, a drab 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah, if you, if you have two good two good ball playing sides play together, you just you just left for who is going to get that spark. Like That's just fun. get that chance and get the goal. And it didn't it didn't it didn't really come in the game, but it's just it was it's I'm sure like I was I was able to watch the game, but I'm sure the game will be a very interesting one because Newcastle are playing a very good style of type of football now and the same as Brighton. So just yeah, yeah, two good definitely. sides getting yeah. yeah. Um um Ryan, uh, Aston Villa at uh, two, uh Everton one. Everton again, struggling again to to get goals, struggling again to keep a uh, 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 clean sheet. They're up for a relegation battle this season again. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, they struggled to play for the majority of the game. They were, they, they didn't show up. They showed up in um in the last twenty minutes. The they were especially when they got not especially when they got two goals down, but um they just they they, they started to play and they showed a bit more belief in the last twenty minutes. But they can't they can't wait to the last twenty minutes every game. Um, they need an out and out striker because Anthony Gordon's not the one. Um, he's a very good player, but he's a winger in it. Um, from what obviously I'm not not hundred percent clued up on Everton, but from what I've seen, he's definitely a winger. Um, they yeah. need they need that they need that they need that striker. Um, that Onana looks like a good bit of business. Looks like a good player. Um, he, he showed good skill in the box. Um, he's got so that he's got has got a good head. He can play in couple of different positions as well looks like a good signing for him but I would be worried if I was Everton and I would also be worried if I was Aston Villa because Steven Gerrard and Frank Lampard they they're not the ones for me um I don't yeah. I don't see it um Lampard I don't see a manager scra scraping relegation as soon as Everton can get Sean Dyche in the better for me I feel yeah. like that's where they're gonna go I don't know when that's going to happen this year, but the sooner they do that for me, the better, because that's the guy who keeps them up and then they go from there. But at the minute, under Frank Lampard, I would be very, I'd be very worried. 
Aston Villa, on the other hand, have got a better squad, so to keep them to keep them out of relegation. But if they want to get where they want to be, the owners the owners want to be higher up. If they want to be where they want to be, they need a different manager, hundred percent. Hola. You have uh, this will be the last question before all of us go go out now. Um, Ola, you have your match next weekend against Liverpool. Don't do that to him. Don't do it to him. <laughs> Ola, I, <laughs> Ola, I'm very sorry for asking this question, but what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> Rest in peace. The Undertaker. Rest in peace. I see you. I see you, Ryan. I see you, Ryan. But let's don't do it to him. It's part of the family, you know? Well, so, um, <laughs> the, the, thing with, the, the thing with the league is uh, they will come and did that Arsenal, Arsenal will also lose a game. So, um, yeah. Maybe I'm in the next lose. five seasons. We're good no, now. We have to in this, good. Like it's, it's, it's definitely in this season, and, and it, 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 it might be sooner than that you that you guys expect. But but uh, well, like you said, with the, with, with the Liverpool game, I just need we need to just do a damage limitation. We, we don't need to allow that goals the goals to go <laughs> into six, seven, eight goals. Let's just let's just take the loss and take it reasonably, like a reasonable loss of two nil or three nil. And like enough of all these four, five, six, and just this, we know we, we this is, uh, no United fans is expecting a win or a draw from Liverpool. Uh, but it's football at the end of the day. Look at Fulham versus, versus Liverpool. No, no one expected Liverpool to draw that game. And now, and now we know we know we can we can attack against any team. So possibly we might defend and scrape a new new draw. Or we won't want to, anything can happen in that game. But I, I don't have any expectation for the game. I, let the game just come on Saturday and let's see how it goes. That's that's the that's we united now. Let's just take it game by game. If we keep losing, no problem. What's, what's, your, prediction, like what's your prediction for that game? I can't have a prediction for the game. <laughs> I, I don't have a prediction for that game. It's, it's not possible. I can't have a prediction for the game because, because I I don't think we are scoring against the Liverpool side. If we can't score against Bedford and against Brighton, then we can't score against Liverpool. But okay. and I can mm-hmm. and I I can't openly predict my team to lose or to, or a, 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 a score against my team. So sorry. I don't think I have a vision for the game, but let's see how it goes on Saturday. Um, Ryan, what do you think will be the scores for uh, Liverpool and Manchester United next week? A quick one before we go. I'm gonna go. Um, I'll say I'll say three nil. I'll I'll, I'll, be, I'll be I'll be nice and say three nil. <laughs> like last year, five nil. Hopefully, you've got a bit more grit and you don't want that to happen this year. So you'll go for it a bit more, but um, yeah, three nil. Um, yeah, 3-0. yeah, yeah. Um, as for me, can someone please ask me too? I'm I'm human. Come on, someone should ask me what. <laughs> so only give a score prediction. Come on, score prediction. <laughs> okay. Uh... <clears throat> Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Give us yeah. your score prediction. Give us uh... your score prediction. Basically, I think that Manchester United will be mauled <laughs> next week. <laughs> it's going to be the heaviest beaten Manchester United would get ever. Yeah, true. Manchester, I think Manchester, it's, Uni- I, I, Manchester United will be beaten seven goals to one next I week. I think with that now is that the fans are also planning to stage a workout in like the 50s. <laughs> 70, 70, 60 minutes or 70 something minutes of the game and all. So I'm, I'm sure I'm by sorry. that time, I'm sure, I'm sure by that time, no one, no one will be remaining in the stadium. After, in the stadium. After considering the five to six goals. Because it, it, it can only go from bad to worse. I don't see anything improving anytime soon. I don't think... I see, them, because I see all, them losing. I see them losing yes, 7-1. Because, because all the teams, all the teams in the Premier League now, they are strengthening their team. They are trying to play better football, but we are going the other way around. So it just shows how bad we are. Manchester United are yeah. never team now are like the two worst teams in the league to show you how how far we're falling. But yeah, we just have to take yeah. it. Yeah, Sorry, exactly. Take- so um yeah um viewers, uh, <laughs> that's the Premier League post game for Saturday. Uh, next week, uh, please join us. Uh, what time are we having the Ryan and Claude show, Ryan? Um, what time's that game next week? 
Uh, I think it should be, isn't it? Like oh, the Van O'Clock show. The Van O'Clock uh, show, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock UK time. Uh, 7 o'clock UK time, yeah. So yeah. everyone, please join us uh, 7 o'clock UK time in Finland. It's uh, about 9 o'clock. Me and Ryan uh, uh, Maguire will be getting into the Premier League. Uh, we would have to review everything that has gone on uh, this weekend. And we'll also uh, post uh, a prediction uh, for what is going to happen uh, next week. Uh, for next weekend games. Uh, and also, uh, we would have the chance to hear from uh, Ola of the United family. He will give us an in-depth look into what Manchester United is really passing through right now. Uh, and that will be at the rival show on Thursday. I can't. I can't wait for that. Uh, uh, Ryan, you have to be. You have to be there for this one. <laughs> you know, it's gonna be fireworks because I, I want to see him shout. I want to see him confused. So <laughs> it's a good one. You, you know, you have to. No, you have to follow us on that one. <laughs> but, but I don't. I don't think. I. I. I don't think there's really any rivalry here anymore. Okay. Uh, I would like, like, like you said, I would give an in-depth analysis on the game. There's a lot, yeah. there's a lot to talk about, about from the players to the board to the coaching also. So yeah. you have to like uh, dissect everything and get to the root dissect of where this problem is really coming from. Yeah, no yeah. problem. So guys, please make sure you join me and uh, Ryan Maguire on Tuesday for that uh, Premiership Roundup. Uh, you know, it's going to be a very, very big one at the Ran and Cloud show. Uh, as you know, it's uh, the flagship show here and um, it's going to be a big one on Tuesday. So please join us uh, as we uh, will also be um, rounding off uh, on the Premier League week. Uh, on Wednesday, Deji Spores, <laughs> the world famous Deji Spores will be gracing the minority report again. And I really hope that Chelsea do their job tomorrow and help us beat Tottenham so that uh, me and Ryan and Ola can be able to um, uh, mock uh, Deji Spores uh, on Wednesday. But we'll wait and we'll see what's going to happen. Hey, guys, thank you very, very much uh, for uh, taking your time to, to, you know, to grace the show. I love you yeah. guys. Huh? Thank you very, very much. And see you guys and, next uh, week. Uh, make, sure, make sure you guys like, subscribe and share. And uh, very good for eating the 1K plus subscribers. Let's let keep it going and take it to the next level. Thank you, yeah. guys. Ryan, what do you yeah. say? No. Ryan, no. we just hit 1K. We just hit 1K. We're not monetized yet, but we just hit 1K. <laughs> any, anyone that watches the video afterwards, any questions or comments, stick them down below. We, uh, will, we will read and we will answer. We will shout you out. Anyone that's commented today, thank you very much. Um, anyone that watches, much love. God bless. Keep watching because we are going up, up, up. Yeah. Hey, thank you guys. Thank you everyone who thank who has supported uh, this uh, this channel. Uh, we're one thousand one k plus strong now. So thank you guys for getting us across uh, uh, that uh, mountain. Thank you very much, and see you guys next week. Thank you very much.